Namaste and a very, very good evening to all of you. I welcome you to my channel, The Outlier. My name is Mithu. In today's video, I'll be talking about a very interesting technique, which is called as reliability analysis. Even before I proceed to talk about what exactly is reliability analysis, who should use this, and how do we interpret the output of reliability analysis, may I request you to subscribe to my channel, also like and share my videos. Let me begin by talking about what exactly is reliability analysis. Reliability analysis is a statistical method which is used to evaluate the consistency and stability of a measurement tool. What do I mean when I say a measurement tool? When I say a measurement tool, in this context, I'm referring to a questionnaire. Essentially, reliability analysis is used to evaluate the internal consistency as well as stability of the questionnaire that you have designed. SPSS provides various methods for evaluating the reliability. One popular method to evaluate the reliability of the questionnaire is the Kronbach's alpha. Now, what exactly is the Kronbach's alpha? Kronbach's alpha is a statistical measure which tells you how consistent your questionnaire is. I repeat, Kronbach's alpha is a statistical measure which tells you how consistent your questionnaire is. SPSS also provides options for examining the inter-item correlation and item total correlation. This is very useful because it helps us identify items that need to be revised to improve the reliability value. When we speak about Kronbach's alpha, Kronbach's alpha is also called as coefficient alpha. Here, we are looking at the consistency of responses across a few questions. To perform the Kronbach's alpha, let me import a data set. I've already used this file, so I can go to the file menu. In this particular menu, I can go to recently used data. At the very top, you can see there's a file which is called as the phonofilm dataset. The moment I choose the phonofilm dataset, you can see here, SPSS loads this particular data set. Here you can see 10 questions. Question 1, question 2, question 3 and all the way up to question number 10. This is the last of the questions that I have. What is the sample size in this particular data? You can see here I roughly have around 328 observations in this particular data set. What we are interested in is to find out what is the Kronbach's alpha value for these 10 questions. Kronbach's alpha is a special measure of reliability that measures the internal consistency. The more predictably individual item score, scores relate this score, scores relate to each other, the higher the value of Kronbach's alpha. And the higher the value of alpha indicates higher the confidence you can have that this is internally consistent and correlates well with itself. To perform the Kronbach's alpha, what I will do is I'll go to analyze then choose the option scale. Within scale, you have four different options. You can click on the very first button, which is called as reliability analysis. At the left-hand side, you can see some of these attitudinal questions. The first question is, I enjoy going to the cinema. Second question is, I like a wide variety of choices in the video shop. The third question is, do uh, my, leisure, my leisure activities are mainly out of home. 
So most of these questions are asked with the intention of knowing how do you derive your entertainment? Do you go out and party? Do you socialize with people? Are you a swimmer? Do you like watching TV? Do you like watching movies? Are you somebody who likes to swim? Are you somebody who likes to play guitar? These are some of the questions that are being asked. One important point here, let me just click on cancel for a moment. We'll have to observe the type of the variables here. And to look at the type of the variables, we can go to variable view. These are the questions. Please observe that the type is numeric. The decimal place is set to zero. And here, when you look at the measurement level, each of these variables is stored as an ordinal variable. So each of the 10 variables that we have is of ordinal scale. With this background, let me again go to Analyze, Scale, and then Reliability Analysis. Here, I'll choose the 10 questions. I'll just choose Display Variable Names. These are the 10 questions which I will be pushing under the Items box. You can see here, the default value that is used is the alpha value. When you click on the drop-down menu, there are other measures as well, like split half, the Gutman measure, parallel measure, strict parallel measure. So these are five important options which can be used to evaluate the reliability of your questionnaire. At the right-hand side top corner, you have what is called as a statistics button. You can click on this particular button. This gives you a whole variety of options. People typically use descriptives for item. Sometimes people also choose summarize the mean values. This is only optional. You can now click on continue and then say, OK. As you can see here, in the output window, SPSS gives you the output of the reliability analysis. The sample size here is 328. None of the cases were excluded. And therefore, the total observations on which the Cronbach's alpha value is calculated is 328. Let's now look at the second table, which is the reliability statistics table. Here, you can see the Kronbach's alpha. The Kronbach's alpha value is 0 0.068. I repeat, it is 0 0.068. Typically, Kronbach's alpha value will lie between 0 and 1. I repeat, Kronbach's alpha value will lie between 0 and 1. Under rare circumstances, the Kronbach's alpha value can be negative. Typically, you get a negative value of Kronbach's alpha when one of the questions is reverse coded. Now, how do we interpret the Kronbach's alpha value? If the Kronbach's alpha value is greater than 0 0.7, it means that there is internal consistency amongst the questions that you have specified. On the other hand, if the alpha value is less than 0 0.7, I repeat, if the alpha value is less than 0 0.7, it means that your questionnaire is not consistent and hence not reliable. Alpha value greater than 0 0.7, that is the thumb rule that we look at. When you look at the Kronbach's alpha value here, we are getting a number of 0 0.068. This is clearly less than 0.7. Hence, we have a problem. Remember, the typical thumb rule is higher the value of Kronbach's alpha, more reliable our data is. Here, our data is not at all reliable because we have a low Kronbach's alpha. This indicates 
the possibility that we have some issues with our questionnaire. I repeat, this indicates that we have many issues with our questionnaire. I'd like to also draw your attention to a very, very important point. Let's say you forget the interpretation of Cronbach's alpha. SPSS is very, very helpful even here. How does it benefit you? You can just simply double click on the Cronbach's alpha value. Close the pivoting trees dialog box. I don't need the pivoting table. Let me select Cronbach's alpha, I'll right click on this. And the very first option here is, what's this? When I click on this, you can see here, SPSS gives you a short description of what exactly Kronbach's alpha value is. It says that Kronbach's alpha is a measure of reliability that is a lower bound for the true reliability of the survey. The computation of Kronbach's alpha is based on the number of items of the survey and the ratio of average inter-item covariance to the average item variance. So this is how SPSS helps you with the interpretation of Kronbach's alpha value. Along with the Kronbach's alpha value, SPSS also prints the Kronbach's alpha based on the standardized items and the number of items. The number of items tells you how many questions are there in the data set. You can also look at some of the descriptive statistics here. What is the mean value of each of the items and their respective standard deviation? Initially, we have relatively higher values. We have values greater than three, but when you go down, you can see some of these variables have a value which is less than 3. For example, 2.85, 2.61 and 2.79. It could be that because of these variables, the Kronbach's alpha value has gone down. I will be making another video in future which talks about how you can improve the Kronbach's alpha value. What steps can you take to boost up the Kronbach's alpha value? That's a topic for another discussion. Here, I'd like to leave you with five important thoughts as to why we have a low Kronbach's alpha value. This could mean that the questions or the instructions are not clear. When the reliability level is very low, we need to go back and look at our pilot test and make some changes to the questions so that the instructions become more clear to the participants. Secondly, we might also want to increase the number of questions. Thirdly, we might want to increase the number of observations. Fourthly, we might want to drop off all those questions which are either unclear or if the questions are really unclear or ambiguous, we might want to rewrite or reword or rephrase the questions so that they become more and more clear to the participants who are filling these questions. Last but not the least, we might want to relook. My apologies. We might want to relook at the style of questioning before rolling it out to the participants. So these are some of the steps that you can take to improve the Kronbach's alpha value. With this, I have come to the end of today's video. In today's video, we have seen what exactly is reliability analysis. We have seen how to generate the Kronbach's alpha value. What is the interpretation of Kronbach's alpha? Remember, if the Kronbach's alpha value is bigger than 0 0.7, you can always feel safe and comfortable and rely on the internal consistency of the questions that you have. On the other hand, if the Kronbach's alpha value is less than 0 0.7, it's not a good sign. 
I request you to subscribe to my channel. Also, like and share my videos. Thank you very much for watching uh, this particular video. Have a great day ahead.